Hello friends, welcome to my new lecture today. Today I will speak on one of the greatest novelists of the Victorian era and uh, a writer who has created his own mark in the field of novel writing. Although he tried his hands at, vari at various other genres and was successful in writing some of the famous poems too. But he is mainly popular and remembered as a great Victorian novelist. And that writer is Thomas Hardy. Yes, my friends, today I will speak few uh, sentences. I will give you a brief introduction on one of the greatest novelist of the Victorian era, Thomas Hardy. Now, Thomas Hardy was both a poet and novelist who was born on 2nd of June, 1840 in a small place, in a very small place and a picaresque cottage which was built for his grandfather, Thomas I, in 1801. And the place is Higher Bookhampton. And Higher Bookhampton is a place which is in a place called Dorchester, which is around 100 miles from London. Thomas Hardy, this Dorchester, where Thomas Hardy was born, later became very much ingrained and engraved in Hardy's life. And we can see the influence of this place called Dorchester in the construction of his imaginary place called Wessex. Hardy, like William Shakespeare, Charles Dickens and D. H. Lawrence did not have the conventional public school and he was neither an Oxford educated but he was very widely read and he thought more deeply than many highly educated intellectuals. By the time he reached London, that is in 1862, at a very young age, he had determined to become a poet. He basically wanted to be a poet, but the world and the things in, in future to come decided something else for Hardy. And as a result, Hardy failed to get acquainted with very famous poets such as Swinburne, Charles Swinburne or Robert Browning, who lived very close by to his place. He wrote at the beginning of his career, when he, was, when he shifted to London, he wrote many poems and he sent them to various magazines. But unfortunately, they were all rejected. Of course, he had to earn a living and he had to have a livelihood. So, he went with the flow, with the demand of the age and the demand was novels. So, he started his hand in novel writing to earn his livelihood and to become a famous writer because he had already read William Shakespeare, he had thoroughly read John Milton and he greatly admired the romantic poets. And there was a lot of things which was common between him and William Wordsworth. So far as, for example, the themes, the language of Hardy's poems and Wordsworth's poems are concerned and the novels are concerned. This was one of the main reasons he wanted to become a poet at the beginning of his career. But as I said, God had other plans for him. And so to earn a livelihood, he 
tried his hand uh, in uh, he tried his hand in novel writing he was very much deeply interested in man's ultimate relationship with the world that was his inquisitiveness and his interest now if you go by the chronological de details of his writing as a writer as a career you will be surprised to know that his first writing was neither a novel nor a poem but an essay and the name of the essay was on the application of colored bricks and terracotta to modern architecture and this essay was published in 1864 so this was his first formal writing professional writing meanwhile his novel desperate remedies in 1871 was published and again the interesting part was it was published anonymously and this novel basically was written by Thomas Hardy at the suggestion of George Meredith because he had a very close close bonding with George Meredith after 1871 followed another novel that is under the greenwood tree in 1872 the title of this novel under the greenwood tree uh, under the greenwood tree 1872 was taken from shakespeare's as you like it and this was very highly appreciated and ad admired by then the very famous poet alfred tennyson and coventry patmore this under the greenwood tree in 1872 was followed by a pair of blue eyes in 1873 his admire, admirer leslie stephen published his next commercially successful novel far from the madding crowd in 1874 far far from the madding crowd was not only a commercial major success of thomas hardy but this novel is also important because we should remember that it is in this novel that thomas hardy first of all introduced his beautiful imaginary place called wessex so it is it is the novel called far from the madding crowd which was published in 1874 where thomas hardy first introduced to his readers his imaginary world his imaginary place called wessex and as we all know in most of his novels he the, this place called wessex played a very significant role in 1876 his next novel the hand of ethelberta was published this was followed by the return of the native in 1878 and the trumpet major in 1880 after trumpet major in 1880 he wrote his next novel called leo dcn l a o lo d i d c e a n 1881 and this novel is significant because he wrote it in spite of his very bad health condition he wrote it just to keep his word which he has given which he had given to his publisher a comet was seen by thomas hardy in 1882 which inspired him and he wrote a slightly built romance called the two on a tar the two on a tar was published in 1882 then came one of his most ambitious novel called the mayor of casterbridge the mayor of casterbridge was published in 1886 and we should also know the subtitle of this famous uh, work by thomas hardy that is the subtitle is the life and death of man of character mayor of casterbridge 1886 this was followed by the woodlanders in 1887 and then came one of the hard hitting novels of thomas hardy that is tess tess was published in 1881 which was this novel 
was followed by many indignant and unreasonable attacks because Thomas Hardy wrote something which the Victorian critics did not appreciate. I will talk about it in his features of writings, in his characteristics of writings. He was, he wrote for the women. He was a writer who wrote for not only a married man and a female, but he also wrote for a relationship that can develop between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman, which somehow was not appreciated. These are many reasons. Hardy wrote ahead of his times, we can say. Some of the writings that he wrote was ahead of his times. That created a lot of panic. That created a lot of uh, uneasiness in, in a certain section of the Victorian society. And that resulted in a lot of indignant and unreasonable remarks in 1891 with the publication of Tess. This was not the end of it. His next hard-hitting novel called The Jude the Obscure was published in 1895. And there was an opinion that was divided about Hardy's. And this Jude the Obscure, which was published in 1895, is the last novel by Thomas Hardy because after this Hardy stopped writing. This novel was banned on account of its atheism that Hardy had portrayed through this novel. And then after Hardy stopped writing, he was not happy, he was frustrated and uh, to some extent he felt that uh, now the people of his time did not deserve his writings and so he stopped writing novels and obviously after you know, he, he, he stopped writing novels at his very prime time of writing novels when he was producing a lot of productive literary work. At that time, he was not happy with the response he got from Tess and Jude because as a sensible writer, he knew what he was writing and he expected not this kind of response. And so he decided to stop novel writing and his last novel was published in 1895 called The Jude the Obscure and as I said this novel was banned on account of its atheism that this novel focused, showcased. So for consolation he again turned back to his first choice that is writing poems and he received a a lot of contentment in writing the poems after you know having received so much of severe criticism for his novels. He also wrote some of the stories which can be found in the collections called the Wessex Tales. Wessex Tales was published in 1888. In 1891 there was a story collection called A Group of Noble, Noble Dames. And in 1894, there was this novel, no, uh, there, there was this collection, a collection of stories called Life's Little Ironies. Now, this was the chronological development of Thomas Hardy as a writer and his works. Now, if we talk about the features of Hardy's writings, there are some of the very important features of Hardy's writing. The first feature we all know is regionalism. He, the central appeal of Hardy's writings is his description of the place. That the way he described the places in his novels. And that's why uh, there's, there's most of the time there's this question in universities. You know, write something on Hardy as a regionalist writer. The second feature which we can say is the importance of Wessex that Hardy has placed in most of his novels. And... It's not only the Wessex. Wessex played a significant role in Hardy's novels, not only as a place, but that place uh, acted as a transition between the agrarian age, which frames people and their stories, and the industrial change all around the world. So this division of the agrarian age and the industrial, this transition was very beautifully portrayed by Hardy by this depiction of the place called Wessex. Point number two. Point number three, unity of time and place. 
because he limited most of the action of his novels to a very small and confined area, he was able to achieve the unity of place. And Hardy has even provided, if you, if you research on Hardy, you will find that he has even provided the detailed map of the place called Wessex. He was so crystal clear in the construction of the Wessex. And uh, Wessex was a part of his life. And as I said in the beginning of the of my lecture, that Wessex was very, very deeply inspired from his birthplace called Dochester. And he also, uh, you know, he, he was able to take unity of uh, time and place. Time because, you know, most of the actions of Hardy's used to take place in a year or in a day. That was point number three. Point number four of his characteristics of writing was his idea of writing. What do I mean by that? I mean the impressions of life that Hardy gave through his writings. He presented a very subtle, very clear, very vivid description of life as it is. Through the depiction of the place, through the depiction of the characters. So, he was a very, very impressionistic writer in terms of his idea of writing. Point number five, human relations and aspirations. Instead of criticizing the society, Hardy was rather interested in human aspirations and relationships. And the Krask, the central theme of his novels, were love family and marriage. This formed the central theme. And as I said in, in some part of this lecture of mine, apart from the relationship between a married woman and a married man, he explored through his novels the relationship between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman, which as I said caused a lot of distress among a certain group of people. Point number six. I'm talking about the characteristics, the features of his writings. Point number six, the middle class. Middle class played a very, very significant part in the novels of Hardy. His novels were mostly read in the Victorian age, as we know. And as why, why was it read so much? Why were people interested in reading his novels? Because he portrayed the life and the culture of the middle class who had acquired money and had the leisure to read. He, he was very apt in portraying the culture. Point number seven features of his writing I'm talking about. There, there's a lot of reference to the classical writers in his writings. Writers such as Homer, Oedipus, Sophocles, Sophocles or Sophocles. There was this reference uh, of these writers in his writings. So uh, if you say uh, these are some of the features that I tried to discuss. Seven features. Feature number one, features of Hardy's writing. Feature number one is uh, regionalism. Feature number two is the place, the, the place he created, that is Wessex. Feature number three, unity of time, place, played a very significant role. Feature number four, his impression, his ideas of writing. Feature number five, human relation and aspiration. Feature number six, of course, very important feature, middle class and feature number seven, a reference to a lot of classical writers. So, dear friends, this was just an introduction about Thomas Hardy and his features of writing that you will find when you read Hardy's novels, Hardy's works, which are of course fascinating and I'm sure you all, you all have read Hardy. So my objective of creating this video lecture was to just make you all revise, to take you all back to Hardy days and just revise chronologically Hardy's works and his features of writing because as we all know Hardy plays a very very important role in all our literature lovers life because we cannot think of Victorian age without Hardy. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I, I was able to give you some information through this video. So it is my humble request. If you like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. I'll really be indebted to you all. And 
with a promise before I say goodbye that I will upload more videos in the coming days and weeks. Lots of love and aspirations for becoming a literature lover to you all. May God bless you all. May God keep you all safe. This is Dr. Shoikot Banerjee signing off with a promise that I'll be back with many more video lectures, which I'm sure you all will enjoy. Thank you very much for sparing your time and watching my video. Thank you so much.